My name's Adam Hills. Welcome to Spits and Specs, the music quiz show that met a gin-soaked barroom queen in Memphis and said someone really should write a song about you. Our two team captains each and every week are the rechargeable Alan Bro and the reconstructed Miff Warhurst. Alan's first guest tonight is a Brisbane-born singer-songwriter who has formed her own band, collaborated with famed musician Paul Grabowski, and has been described as having, quote, an uncommonly beautiful voice. Please welcome Megan Washington. <laughs> Alan's second team member is a comedian who loves heavy metal music. He can answer any question we throw at him, but only if we ask it backwards. He's Adam Rosenbachs. <laughs> Miss first guest tonight is the drummer for NXS. Has toured the world with NXS. Played in front of 70,000 people at Wembley Stadium with NXS and was a member of one of Australia's greatest ever live acts. From NXS, please welcome John Farris. <laughs> Miss final guest tonight is a musical comedian who has just started work on Dungeons and Dragons The Opera. <laughs> oh yeah, it's the opera that ain't over till the fat lady rolls two thirteens, then slays the Keeper of the Golden Realm. <laughs> Please welcome Scott Edgar. Okay. Well, now, there are a lot of connections going on on the panel tonight, because I know for a fact that, Scott, you saw Megan perform in Adelaide. I did. And described it to me as one of the best concerts you've ever seen. Dude, I'm trying to seem cool to Megan. <laughs> you know, oh. unbelievable. Now, now, now the jig's up. Yes, it was. It was fantastic. Wonderful, wonderful. Liar. It's amazing. Well, no, it's true. So that's good at it. all, it's incredible. That's all true. We were bawling at the end. Yeah, he fantastic. told me he was in tears by the end of your concert. But that's just because he's a massive girl. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's another connection going on here that we have to mention. John, yes. you and I met in uh, Los Angeles about that's five correct. years ago. Yes. I was hanging out with Corinne Grant, actually. That's right. And we walked into a, a, a bar trying to have a quiet drink, and we heard the voice go, Oh, those guys are Aussies. They should drink with us. Mm -hmm. And there was just this weird moment of walking over and going, okay, who are these people? And I'm pretty sure it was Kerry, yeah, that's your right, fiance, who yeah, went, that's right. your fiance now wife said, yeah. hi, I'm Kerry, and this is uh, John. And you went, hi, John Farris. And both Corinne and I went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the guy You were from scared. Me. That meant tequila, didn't it? That's why you were scared. <laughs> we then did go into tequila. And every, wow. every like, 20 mm. minutes, you were, you were looking at me and going, you're not going to talk about this on your show, are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Come on, we're just, we're just hanging out. How long was on? <laughs> on the 15th. Tequila, you, really? You're not going to talk about it on the show? <laughs> no, we're fine. And then yeah. hanging out of a hotel room on Sunset Street. You're not going to talk about that on the show. <laughs> yeah. So just so you know, I'm not going to talk about it on the show. <laughs> okay. Thanks. But I do have a photo of that night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's amazing nice. what you can do with computers, isn't it? <laughs> Miff and Alan are going to pick a topic that everybody will be quizzed on. Uh, your choices tonight are backing vocalists, songwriting duos, arrangers and managers. Alan, you can pick the first topic tonight. <laughs> can we have backing vocalists, please? You certainly can. Miff? Can we have songwriting duos, please? Uh, sure thing. We'll start uh -huh. with a backing vocalist. Everyone on All your right. buzzers? Let's uh. play Spicks or Specs. Your first question for one point. Although they went on to release their own albums, which of Joe Camilleri's bands... Did... Uh. Yes? Uh, which of Joe Camilleri's bands will... Vicka and Linda Bull in is what you're going to ask, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Oh, the Falcons, perhaps? No, I'm oh! going to throw it over to this side. Black Sorrows. Black Sorrows it is. First oh, one. No. But how, how did the Black Sorrows get around? A Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> right. Have a look yeah, at right. this early clip of Young Guns Go For It from Wham. One of the backing vocalists in the clip went on to sing in Paul Weller's 80s soul band. Yes. The Stole Council were the name of the band. Yes. And DC Lee would be the backing singer. Yes, it oh, was. Oh, Alan. Good. Good. Amazing. Good. Uh, have a look at the following grabs for three points. Name the backing vocalists. Yes, this side. Did I um, hear the horrific screechings of Yoko in the background? Yes, there oh. were the horrific screechings of Yoko. Yeah, nice, nice the song was the continuing story of Bungalow Bill by the Beatles, and Yoko Ono was on backing vocals. Yep. Now, the first one. I don't even know who it was. Bowie. It was David Bowie, yes oh, it was. What was the song? David Bowie was doing backing vocals on the song Falling Down by Scarlett Johansson. Oh, that's right. Oh, right. I think the third one... It was a Carly Simon song. I've, I think it might be Mick Jagger. Yes, it is, Alan, bro. Oh, Mick oh Jagger God. sang backing vocals on You're So Vain by yeah, Carly but Simon. Because she wrote it about him. 
Suppose, she? Well, she either wrote it about um, Warren Beatty, Warren Beatty, yeah. Yeah. or about Mick Jagger. And then after it was released, a Warren Beatty sent her a note saying, "Thank you so much for the song." So he actually did think the song was about him. <laughs> that is pretty much this, like the songwriter's dream. Like if you write a, a song, like a breakup song, the best thing that you can possibly do is get the person who the song is about to sit in the studio with you for like hours and hours and hours on end and have to sing on it. Have yeah. you written breakup songs? And I've written many, many breakup and songs. And have you forced any of the people? That you're broken up with to be involved in the song? No, but I have I have a personal project that when I'm older I'm going to make an album that's all breakup songs that have been written about me by other musicians. <laughs> <laughs> that's my plan. What's the name of that album? Cold um, Sores. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys ever have any massive musos come in and play with In Excess? I remember when we first recorded in New York, we had uh, Niall Rogers produce Original Sin. Niall Rogers being the guitar player from Chic, so that was pretty cool. He just actually produced Madonna. Right. came off the back of uh, David Bowie's uh, Let's Dance album. And he, he brought in uh, <laughs> Daryl Hall uh, to come and do okay. that. <laughs> and I was, I was standing there with Kirk, uh, you know, opposite Daryl Hall singing backups. Going, uh, you got to be kidding. So original scene, Daryl Hall does backing vocals. Yeah. Wow. wow. I had no yeah. idea. Yeah. I read yeah. a great story about you guys doing a sound check where some guy just wandered on stage and, <laughs> yeah. and ended up getting thrown off stage. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we were playing in Rio de Janeiro. Was and... it John Oates? So yeah, we were doing this gig in Rio de Janeiro. It was called Rock and Rio. We were headlining, um, and we were very honoured to have um, you know playing before us Joe Cocker. Um, Billy Idol and Carlos Santana and uh, we were doing a sound check and we started a song and we're playing you know I'm playing along and I kind of look over and this guy is just standing there like just looking at me anyway he sort of walked around he walked up to a couple of guys and just stood there and stared at their guitars and walked up to Michael and sort of stood there and kind of watched him sing for a bit you know? <laughs> and uh, eventually I was like who's this guy you know and Kirk leans over to his guitar tech and says Man, we're just feeling a bit um, off-putting by this guy would you mind just asking me to leave the stage you know and so he gets um, a couple of guys to come up and sort of walk him off the stage and it turns out it was Carlos Santana. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Right. 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 the songwriting duos, your first question for one point. In 1994, Red Edge band members Daniel and Darren left to form which highly successful, oh. yes? Savage Garden. Brisbane songwriting duo, Savage Garden it was. Well done. Uh, have a listen to this grab of Heroes and Villains by the Beach Boys. I've been in this town. Two points, tell me two things. Who co-wrote the song with Brian Wilson and what delayed release album it was originally uh, intended for? Yes. Um, Smile. Yes, was the, the album. Yep. And um, Van Dyke Parks. Yes, two oh. points, Alan. Oh. Oh. Has anyone on the panel seen Brian Wilson perform lately from the Beach Boys? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it the most amazing thing to watch oh, it's him? it's astounding. He's got his keyboard and he's got two uh, screens there with the, his lyrics, so kind of wherever he... Because, you know, he's... He's been, been under the weather, like he's lived, so he's <laughs> kind of a bit shaky. And like, so wherever under he lived, the weather, he, where, well, you know, it's kind of like saying New Orleans got a bit of rain. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, okay. So he's completely rooted upstairs, right. and yeah, wh wherever he. <laughs> so he's got his lyrics there, and but also I've just never. Seen, it was a beautiful experience because I've never seen such a supportive band as well. Yeah. Like whenever he's a bit lost or whatever, he's look across to his band, and you know they're all giving him a big smile, and it's all good. It's yeah. like the it's like he's the league. Guitarist is his carer, kind of thing. <laughs> well, when I saw him, it's I could see the auto cue, mm -hmm. and the auto cue is like you know it, it has all the lyrics, so he doesn't forget his words. But it, then it also said, Brian gets off stage. Not anyway. Have a look at this clip from one of England's most successful songwriting duos. Three questions on the way. For three points, name the duo, the title of the song, and the 70s group they started out in. Yes. It's Godly and Cream. Yes. yes. The duo they started out in was 10CC. Yes. Oh, my God. And the song... Mm-hmm. I... I, no, I could, yeah, go okay. if you, English yeah. Anglophile. I'm going to give you a point for that. It was An Englishman in New York. Oh, Englishman. Uh, and well done. Godley and Cream were actually in 10cc. And were made up of Kevin Godley and Lol Cream, mm. who was a lovely guy but a bugger to get a text from. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd be reading it. Sorry to hear you lost your job. Let me know if I can do anything. Lol. <laughs> Brother Ruffle was a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the first round, the scores are uh, Mitch John Scott are on oh, two no. points, Alan, Megan, Adam, way out in front, ten points. <laughs>
Teams have to buzz in and identify the tunes being performed live in the studio. Tonight, your songs are being played by death metal band Internal Nightmare. <laughs> now, before we start, they are going to be loud. Just so you know, here in the studio, they are going to be proper loud. So, earplugs, very important. I'm going to hand these no, earplugs out. Don't Can you just, if you need them, just pass them around. Sweet okay, good. Now, not only are they going to be loud, they may well summon Satan. <laughs> so, I've got um, some crucifixes here. <laughs> if you could just hold that in case you need to. Um, Ma'am, up here, you can have the one with the beads. <laughs> just in case. Um, and look, you know, if all else fails, we've got holy water. Awesome. So, um, uh, you, ma'am, over here, could you just keep hold of the holy water just in case it all goes horribly wrong? <laughs> well, I think we're all set for internal nightmare. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, internal nightmare! <laughs> It's Aki Breaky Heart. It's Aki It's back in black. Wow. Yes. Next song, please. Never going to give you up. Never going to give you up. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Next song, please. Sweet Home Alabama. Sweet Home Alabama leads in it. Final song, please. John Farnham. Yeah. <laughs> right. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, internal nightmare. Yeah. Hey, Megan. Yeah. Did you tickle a midget in Portugal? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a euphemism? Uh, <laughs> what sort of lonely planet do you no, have? Hey, what... <laughs> Gonna take a midget today, and uh, then I'm going to Lisbon. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, okay. So the story is that I was in Portugal uh, about a year ago, and um, I just, uh, like, you know, got there, and I, I was, I was in a bookstore, and I was in in the line to buy a book, you know, and in front of me was standing a, a grandmother, and her child. <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> And they were facing away from me, and um, I, you know, I, I put my book down. I reached around and I, I you know, I tickled him. I, I you know, you sh I know you shouldn't probably touch other people's <laughs> children, but <laughs> yeah, you know what? You yeah. can take the word probably out of that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and and he and he didn't move or react or respond in any way. He just kind of flinched a little bit, and I sort of stood up and went, hmm, that was a bit weird, and I was. <laughs> <laughs> 
exactly reckon he was thinking. <laughs> so I was like, that was so weird. I don't know what happened. I'm not going to take this, you know. I'm going to put my book down again, and I, I, I got down on my knees, and I reached around. And I, <laughs> I reached around. I, I tickled, you know, I tickled, you know, I tickled him from the sides. But this time I also, like, tussled up his hair. <laughs> <laughs> At which point he turned around, and yes, he was a dwarf. <gasps> And he was about 50. Oh. He had a beard. And I think that the grandmother was his wife. Oh. Except now he had this like flock of seagulls haircut. <laughs> where I just. And he looked at me with this amazing mixture of pity and rage. And just kind of looked at me and I just went, I'm really sorry. <laughs> and he had this weird hair and I kind of pushed his hair back. Down. Stop touching him! <laughs> That your head is boiling hot and the rest of your body is freezing yeah. and freezing yeah. cold. Mm -hmm. And that story has actually exactly. preceded me now. That's oh you're the midget girl. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, you know, Gary Glitter somewhere is going, they were midgets, they were midgets. <laughs> I have seen that exact scenario on a like on a sitcom recently, and yeah. I, I have a specific member of sitting at home going, that would never happen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Alright, okay. After that round of scores, uh, Miff John Scott are on four points, Ooh. Alan Megan, Adam Way out in front, 13 Ooh. points. One member of each team will be singing well-known songs using the words of an unrelated piece of text. Your teammates have to identify those songs. Uh, Megan, you'll be singing first for Alan and Adam, and you'll be taking your lyrics from You Can Heal Your Life by <laughs> Louise L. Hay. Uh, that's your book. There are your songs. Don't show your teammates. Ladies and gentlemen, Megan Washington. Yay! What we think about ourselves becomes the truth for us i believe that everyone myself included is responsible for everything in our lives we might. It's, you are extraordinary. Yeah. We might. Um, yeah. We might have to hear some more because I've just actually been listening to you singing, which is, <laughs> which is actually just really not the point of this whole game. Sorry, Al. I'm going to have to throw it over. Uh, God bless the child by Billy Holiday. Oh, it is wow. God bless the child by Billy Holiday. Yeah. You sing so beautifully. Yes. I'm really crying. <laughs> That's awesome. I told you, didn't I? It's just ball. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> In the infinity of life where I am, all is perfect and whole and complete. I believe in a power greater than I am that flows through me in every day. I open myself to the yes. wisdom within. I see red. It's I see red. Yeah. Yeah. They work. I like when I get them. Uh, final song, please, Megan. P.S. Uh, Tim Finn's really hot. Okay. <laughs> Not in the book. <laughs> As you read this. Take a deep breath And as you exhale Allow all the tension To leave your body Let your face relax Your head does not need to be tense in order for you to read. Let your tongue and your throat and shoulders relax. You can do that now. Yes, creep by Radiohead. Yes, <laughs> creep by Radiohead. Megan, I've Thank read you. that book, You Can Heal Your Life by Louise L. Hay. <laughs> Seriously, I reckon you did me more healing just then than the entire book <laughs> did. That's amazing. There's only two people I've found it, that you and the other three that I've found it almost impossible to listen to without crying, and I did just cry before, which was Katie Noonan from George yeah. and Martha Wainwright. Oh. And now you. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm, no, I'm up next, Alan. You're <laughs> Get ready. <laughs> 
You will indeed be singing for <laughs> Miff and John. And you'll be taking your lyrics from Becoming a Contagious Christian oh, wow. by Bill Hybels and Mark Mittelberg. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how you become a contagious Christian. Catching a bit of God this Sunday. God? I've, got, I've got a 24 hour God. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Scott Edgar. Thank you. Cry. Okay, uh, it sort of goes like this. Um, <laughs> the Bible tells us that Jesus was crucified between two thieves. It's important to remember that these guys were serious criminals. They didn't crucify people in those days for petty misdemeanors. These thieves had done some heavy duty damage, and society had decided it no. Yes. It's not take five. It's take five by Dave Brewer. Yeah. Next song, please. This is an easy one. This is one. God gets great pleasure from sending his agents on secret reconnaissance missions with personal instructions no one else knows about. Yes. I get a kick out of champagne. Yeah. I get a kick out of you. Sorry. I get a kick out of you. I can't afford it. Yeah. Uh, and final song, please, Scott. <laughs> this is a bit of a hard one. Okay. <laughs> uh, there's like a lot of bits to this and stuff, so oh, good no. luck. It starts like this, it kind of goes, Jesus knew the importance, and then someone else goes, of perceptions, and then Lisa goes, about being salt and light, he knows that as you learn to live out these guidelines in tangible ways. <laughs> and then the band comes in, and praise your father in heaven. There's a bit of a piano thing. <laughs> Do you see what Jesus was getting at in these verses? In Matthew 5, he was telling us the attitudes and of each of his followers would either draw people towards a relationship. Um, yes. Underground Ben Folds. Underground yeah. by Ben Folds. Yeah. Yeah. It's got everyone in the right yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. For that round of scores, uh, Miff John Scott on eight points, slowly catching up. Alan Megan and Adam in front, 15 points. Yeah. 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 Teams, hands on your buzzers. One point for a correct answer, one point off for a wrong answer. Your questions start now. Which Canadian singer played God in the 1999 film? Uh, yes. Alanis Morissette. Dogma, oh. it was Alanis Morissette. True or false? <laughs> Unlike a modern horn, a natural horn has only one valve. <laughs> True. Uh, false. It has no vowels. Oh, 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 damn those natural horns. horns. With a name what like... is a natural horn? Nasal, Nasal delivery. <laughs> <laughs> One of them long things the Swedes use. Oh, okay. Can we just say natural horn a couple more times? <laughs> <laughs> <Hang on. Okay. laughs> With a name like a fortified wine, which R&B singer released the 2002 album Full Moon? <laughs> Yes. Brandy. Yes. Oh. You may not know your music, but you know your fortified <laughs> wine. <laughs> Have a listen to this. Name the song. Yes. Pop music. Pop music by M. What instrument does actor Steve Martin play? Yes. He's a banjo player. Banjo player yeah. indeed. And what kind of instrument is the character Freddy from HR Puff and Stuff? Flute. Yes, a talking flute. How many sharps or flats are there in the musical key of C major? None. None. Uh, none. Correct. What are the nicknames of the following musicians? Skyhooks Bob Starkey. Yes? Natural horn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, Bongo was the name I was looking for. Oh, okay, right, right, fair right. enough. McKinley Morganfield. Morganfield. Macca. Uh, <laughs> it was Muddy Waters. Oh. oh. And Stacey Ann Ferguson. Uh, yes? That Fergie? Uh, Fergie from the Black Eyed Peas. And finally, Nick Barker and Jim White had a band in the 80s called People With What Up Their Noses. Mm. Oh, I want to say natural horn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to. <laughs> Drugs. Uh, chairs oh! was the answer I was looking for. Wow. At the end of the show, the final scores are Miff, John, Scott ended up on 12 points. Alan, Megan, Adam won the day. 15 oh, points. Oh, wow. <laughs> Would you please thank all our guests for tonight? Megan Washington, Adam Rosenbachs, John Farris and Scott Edgar. <laughs> and of course, our two team captains, Alan Bro and Miff Warhurst. <laughs> 
We leave you tonight with a performance by death metal band Internal Nightmare as they play their own version of Original Sin by In Excess. Thanks for watching Spicks and Specs. My name's Adam Hills. Good night, Australia.